Here are three true scary stories from Reddit. The links to the stories are in the description below. Enjoy. Number one. As a child, I grew up in a nice, middle-class family in Maryland. There were never any serious crimes in our neighborhood, just the typical petty theft from people leaving their cars unlocked. This story takes place on a cloudy and chilly Saturday in October of 93. I was 8 years old and my brother James was 12. We had just left a friend's house after playing hours of street hockey and had to be home by 5.30 p.m. His house was only a couple of blocks away from the elementary school. Across the street from the school was a pretty big sized park. Heading home, James and I followed a path alongside a fence that led directly to the school. I was going on about Art Monk, the Redskins, and how we should write a letter to the stadium, hoping to get an autograph from him. I realized James was oddly quiet during my talking. I asked if he was listening. Then he said, keep talking, act cool, act normal. Don't look back, okay? Confused and nervous, I responded, Okay, what's going on? During my conversation about the autograph, we had come upon a four-way stop in the road next to our path. James noticed a white 1990 Toyota Camry idling in the intersection. This is when he brought it to my attention. He noticed the car began slowly following behind us as I talked. We played it cool and kept our normal walking pace. We arrived at the school across the street from the park. James then placed his hand over my chest, which made me stop immediately. He turned back and glanced at the driver. Now, I wasn't sure if James wanted to see how the car would act, or if he wanted to make a move across the street into the park. However, when we stopped, the car stopped too, and this time I got a good look. The driver was a female, with brunette hair down to her shoulders, and she looked like a druggie. Her passenger, on the other hand, was the intimidating one. He was a redhead with long hair and had an angry look. He looked just like the comedian Carrot Top, but evil. His intense gaze bore holes right through us. After getting a good look and realizing the situation we were in, I started to get nervous and began breathing heavily. My legs felt numb. I looked at my brother and he said, keep walking. What was weird about this day was there were no other cars on the road. It suddenly had the feel of a ghost town. It was just us and them. We continued walking when all of a sudden the car moved. It looked as if she was going to block us off. Staring straight ahead, James said, On the count of three, run, okay? Look at me. Run as fast as you can and follow me. Before I could even accept the deal, he started the countdown. One. Two. Three. He was off and running, with me just trying to keep up. The driver slammed her foot on the accelerator. James started across the street and when I tried to do the same, the car had almost cut me off. I felt the bumper brush against my pants. The Camry now had to back up and accelerate again. My brother and I made it across and I still followed as fast as I could. I realized James was making a run to one of our other friend's house. He ran across the yard and onto the porch and began banging furiously on the door and ringing the bell like crazy. The Camry caught up and the passenger leapt out. As soon as he exited the car, my friend's dad had opened the door. James rushed in and I basically tumbled in after him. Evil Carrot Top hopped back in the car as it began speeding off with my friend's dad in hot pursuit. He yelled something at them and tried to get the license plate number. I was crying. My brother was crying, and my friend's dad looked shaken up. Even though our house was now only a block away, we had our dad come and pick us up. We called the police and gave a report. They said they'd keep their eyes open for the couple and the white Camry. On Monday, we notified the elementary school about our ordeal. However, they didn't do much to let the public know. It wasn't until the next week that they finally sent out flyers to the rest of the parents and cops began patrolling the neighborhoods. What happened was, during the week before the flyers were sent, there were three more reported incidences to the police about a white Camry following kids. One report was even more terrifying than ours. 
where the kids were jumping through backyards and over fences because the redhead was chasing after them. After that week of disturbances, everything had stopped. I never heard of any arrests and I don't know if they moved on to another city or state. All I know is that they had our neighborhood terrified for the rest of that year and it took a little while for things to get back to normal. The brunette driver and that ugly, nasty, red-headed man are forever etched in my brain. So, let's not meet, because if we do, I may have to kill you. Hopefully you're in jail, rotting away, or already dead, because you're both scumbags. Oh, and one last thing. We ended up getting that autograph after all. Number 2 it was the late 90s and my friend and I were over at another friend's house. At around midnight, we decided to set off for home. Neither of us drove, so walking was usually our only option. We walked part of the way back together, then split off in separate directions. He lived out in the country, and the walk back was a pretty long and vacant one. He walked a long stretch of road that passed a cemetery, followed by an almost pitch black mile long walk down a road that led to his village. Ten minutes after splitting up, I got a call from him. He said that a car had pulled up alongside him and a man asked, Hey, do you want a lift? His initial reaction was of confusion. He didn't know the guy, but also, his car was full of kids. Four kids to be exact, and believe their ages ranged from 5 to 14. He told the man no thanks and that he was fine walking. He said the guy's expression changed abruptly, and then he shouted, yeah, well, you didn't fucking look like you needed one, and then sped off. As my friend was explaining this to me, I heard him shout, Oh fuck, he's here again. I immediately turned around and headed back in his direction. I could somewhat hear bits and pieces of their conversation through the phone. The man had pulled up alongside my friend again and asked, Do you want a fucking lift now? My friend again responded, No. Then the guy asked, Are you a hermaphrodite? My friend, confused, asked, What? To which the guy responded, Do you have both male and female genitalia? My friend simply replied, No, and the guy took off in his car again. At this point, I was racing to catch up with my friend. He had just passed the cemetery on the main road, and was approaching the point where he'd turn off into the dark, mile-long stretch of road. I caught up with him and could see that he was visibly freaked out. He told me that the weirdest part was that the kids in the car just seemed unfazed by it, as if this guy does this kind of thing regularly and that they're used to it. The kids weren't laughing, they weren't even really paying attention. It was all just so bizarre. We started walking together and got to the dark mile long part of the road. It's not a nice road to walk on, even in the best of times, and the previous events just made us more nervous, but we pressed on. About halfway down the path, we heard a car coming right up behind us and it was the guy again. He's absolutely flying down the road and comes to a screeching halt right next to us. Again, he lowers the window. That clocked the man, and to me he looked like the most stereotypical guy for that time period. He was in his early 30s and he had that bleach blonde M&M style of hair. Basically, you wouldn't have looked twice at him during that time. He sized me up and said, who the fuck's this? Before either of us could say a word, he screamed, Do you want to fight? And again, before us even answering that question, he took off again, speeding down the road and into the village where my friend lived. Now, we had to walk right in the direction where he'd gone, so we sprinted it, knowing my friend's house wasn't too far away. We made it and rushed into the house. We then set up a stakeout at his bedroom window which looked directly at the only road leading in and out of the village. No car ever passed in the hour we sat there. We concluded that the guy must have lived in the village. I stayed at his house the rest of the night and early next morning we went looking for the car. His village was made up of about four separated cul-de-sacs and we hadn't seen any sign of the vehicle. Whether it was parked in a garage or not, we never knew. But it felt like an episode of the Twilight Zone. So, weird, angry, child convoying football hooligan. Let's never meet again. Number 3 
I work at a retail store and I detest my job with all my heart because I was a dumb shit and said I'm always available. They routinely fuck me over and put me on nights, but I whine and bitch and moan and digress. I'm okay working nights since I get to see my boyfriend when he picks me up. My boyfriend usually gets off at 10.30 but he doesn't leave until around 11, so most nights I'd have to wait for him. On top of that, he has to make a 10-15 to 15 minute drive, which didn't bother me. He'd call to tell me he was coming and made sure I was still alive. Earlier in the week, an Uber driver kept asking me if I was someone named Lenore. I told him no, and the next day he did it again, but this time he kept asking me if I was sure. How the fuck am I not going to be sure of my own name? Fortunately, my boyfriend had pulled in and honked at me, causing the Uber creep to speed away. I'm pretty paranoid, so this made me wonder if he'd been watching me and knew my boyfriend always came late. Then I became even more freaked out. I started getting these weird phone calls from some telemarketing agency. But when I answered, no one was there and they'd hang up. Fast forward three days later, I'm standing outside listening to music waiting for my boyfriend to call and tell me he's on his way. He finally called and cracked a joke about how he's glad the creepy Uber driver didn't answer the phone. As we're shooting the shit and joking, this Indian woman had approached me. I didn't hear her at first since I had noise cancelling headphones. She got closer and kept calling to me. Finally she yelled, Hey! I looked over at her and smiled, then went back to talking to my boyfriend. She did it again and I excused myself. Hi, can I help you? Do you need a ride? She asked. She looked nice enough, but something just didn't settle with me. Her car is parked at the stop sign and there's someone else in it. No, my friend is coming for me, thank you, I replied. I noticed that it's a man in the driver's seat and that she wasn't wearing a uniform from either of the stores near us. She asked again. Are you sure? I can give you a ride. Do you need a ride? Get in. I began to feel a little uncomfortable and I politely declined again and went back to talking to my boyfriend. I asked him, so are you close? I just pulled out, I'll get there, just stay on the line. Is the woman gone? I told him in code that no, she hasn't left, she's still here, leaning on the car, just watching me, and she's looking angrier with each passing second. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw the man tell her something. She looked at me and began interrogating me. Friend's not here, do you need a ride? Where's your friend? He probably forgot you. That's okay, we give ride. It's cold, get in. Tell us where you live, we drop you off. At this point she walked closer to me. I tried to avoid her by moving to the farther end of the plaza strip. Honey? Yeah, so about my sister? Well, she's gotten closer. I'm pretty scared she's too far away from home. Something might happen. Hurry so I can tell you. I say in code as the car drives up. Now she looks pissed. Get in the car now, we give you ride, get in now! At this point, she opened the car and is trying to get me inside, pulling on me, yanking on my jacket. She's a taller, bigger woman and she tried to pick me up. At this point, my bowels threaten to release and I'm screaming, kicking and wiggling. Meanwhile, I can hear my boyfriend yelling that he's coming and that he's calling the police. Now my mind is racing a thousand miles an hour and I'm panicking, thinking I'm going to be raped or be some kind of weird present for her husband, since he looked content with her efforts in trying to kidnap me. Get in, shut up, I will hit you. You need ride. Be quiet, you come with us. You want to see our house? Very nice. You need ride. I started crying as she managed to get my torso in the car. My right hand was locked on my phone as she was trying to pry it from it. My boyfriend's panicking, telling me that the police were sending an officer. She shoved my face into her leather seat. Now my airway was obstructed and she's not letting me go. She's bigger than me, stronger than me, and she knew it. Her whole weight was on me. I tried not to panic and black out from the lack of oxygen. Then all of a sudden, I got mad as shit. Her husband said something in Punjabi, and she lifted one hand up and leaned down trying to grab something from the front. I immediately pushed myself off the seat and reached in my purse to stab her in the stomach. She recoiled, letting go of me a little. Then I headbutted her, thrusting my head back as I screamed, That's my purse! I don't know you! Finally, my boyfriend pulled in and I bolted to his car as the Indian woman is on the ground. I shut the door and he sped off towards the house. When we got inside, I broke down babbling about how scared and terrifying all of it was, how if I hadn't had that opportunity to headbutt her, she might have got me in the car into her house and they would have done God knows what. 
The police officer that had been dispatched got there 20 minutes after the call and didn't find anyone. My boyfriend then talked to his boss and was allowed to leave early to come and get me. I'm still weirded out by cars just sitting, waiting in the plaza. I was also a little upset that my war cry was a line from King of the Hill. So Indian woman and man in a black Toyota, let's never, ever, ever meet again. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. Until next time.